Hi. For this class. So thank you so much for clicking on the 120 welcome and syllabus videos. In this video, I will actually show you how to navigate um, the D2L, explaining the syllabus, going over your first week assignment, and we will discuss how you will proceed in this class. Okay, so um, just a quick reminder, as an online class, your attendance is taken by completion of graded assignments submitted each week. Therefore, to be counted as attending the course, make sure you submit the graded assignments each week. Okay, so thank you again. Thank you so much for watching this welcome and syllabus videos. So a real basic navigation, when you normally click on our class, the first thing you see is the announcement page. Rather than scrolling down, I would like you to click on content. The content displays everything for the course. So under the table content are already labeled, okay? by the weeks and by the topics that you will be going over that week. So we will go over the course information um, here in a little bit, but normally, okay, normally every week, so if I click on topic one, two, three, normally every week, what you're gonna find is lecture handouts, lecture videos that going over these lecture handouts, you're gonna find your assignments. And I, so if the week has a discussion, then I will post discussion. I will put the discussion as the first one. Then you have the homework for the week. Then you have Dropbox. Okay. So your graded assignments are homework, discussion, notes taken, and you're also going to have project in this class. And I will show you. Um, I will show you about when you will go. Um, you will actually need to complete the project. Uh, while I go over the syllabus. And I do want to apologize if you click on other weeks, a lot of stuff is not being uploaded yet. And I do want to apologize. Um, th I'm building this course, um, building this course again from scratch. So as the semester goes on, I will actually post all the lecture handouts, your assignment and your drop boxes. Okay. So for right now, just just, just to get just make sure everybody everybody can get started. Um, I have topic one, two, three, four, and six, um, up, um all the stuff uploaded. So basically, every week, you print or copy down your lecture handouts, use the lecture handout to watch the lecture videos. When you're watching the videos, take notes on the handout you print or you copy down. So if I click on this handout, okay, if you want to print it out, click on download. Download this Word document and print from Word document. Otherwise, the formatting can get a little bit weird uh, if you print directly from D2L. So download the Word document of your lecture handouts and print from Word document. So once you have the handout printed or copy it down, you go to the lecture videos and you begin to watch the lecture video where I will explaining okay um, all the material on the handouts. So watching the lecture video is is just like you come into class, okay, and learning the learning the information. So you're not actually filling out the lecture handout by yourself. You actually take notes on the lecture handout as you watch the lecture video. So once you finish watching all the video for the week, you can begin working on your discussion and or your homework. Okay, the Dropbox here, okay, is the notes that you took. And the top in the name of the Dropbox tell you exactly which topic of notes that you took I want you to turn in. So for the very first week, I only need you turning topic two notes that you took. Okay. So instead of turning all three notes, I just want you turning one of them. So it's not a lot of uploading. All right. So that's basically the process, okay? And then throughout the through a semester, there's gonna be two projects and about five discussion questions, or six if you be including the introduction. So welcome week is a little bit different. Welcome week, you know, it's only two assignments here, the syllabus homework and introduce yourself to the class. This is considered as a discussion topic. Syllabus homework, um, if you do not submit the syllabus homework by the due dates, Okay, then you will actually be dropped for the no show. So I'm using the syllabus homework as basically saying you are you are willing to continue this course. Okay. 
So at the end of, at the end of this video, I will go over the syllabus homework. All right, let's take a look at course information. Course information comes involved with all the things you need at three other semester. Okay, the welcome sub, well, the welcome and syllabus video is also here. The syllabus that I'm going I'm going over in a minute is also in here. My contact information is listed here. The ways to contact it for online classes. Um, the number one way of contacting me is using the D two L instant message. So if you click on the envelope here, you can click on the instant message. Okay, you can click on the instant message to message me, or you can click on email and email me from there as well. Okay, another way of contact other than detail instant message or student email is you can also meet me in Zoom, or you can call me directly to my office, or you can text me to my Google Voice text message. Okay, so I'm not always in my office, so if you, if you, call me if you call me outside of my office hours um i will not know that you call it until i come back so google voice text is really really good um i always you know as long as i mean the as long as i have wi-fi on my phone i will always be able to um i will always be able to read your text message okay and i can quickly text you back let me go back to the table go back to course information all right, in this class, you will not need to purchase a textbook. We use an OER textbook, and I do use this textbook for a lot of reference, okay? So you can open it up, download it, um, and take a look at it if you like. But most of the time, students just go by what's on the lecture handouts and watch lecture videos and do the homework based on, based on what they learn from the video, basically. All right, how to upload handwritten assignments. So this will be your note taken. Basically, the idea of uploading your notes that you took is you take pictures, okay, of the notes you took using your mobile device, then you save those, then you email yourself those pictures, then go to your, um, go to your email, pull up those pictures, save it on the desktop, okay, you basically go to a computer to actually open up these, um, open up these, um, these pictures, save it on the computer so you can actually upload it into the Dropbox. So if I click on one of the Dropbox here, it's basically just a place where you upload, adding attachments, okay? So you can drag and drop those pictures into this um, dash line box, or you can actually click on and click on upload, and then go to your, and go to the place where you save your picture at and upload it from there. So that video is basically explaining, you know, one particular, you know, one of many ways how you can actually upload your notes that you took. All right, how to use graphical equation. Um, when I go over your syllabus homework, I will also show you how to use graphical equation. A lot of mathematical symbol will be entered um, in this class where it will ask you to, en to use the graphical equation to enter them. Once I finish grading your homework, okay, this video shows you how you actually go find the feedback for your homework. All right, how to check for missing assignments. So if you do have some missing homework throughout the semester, this video show you how you can actually, you know, where you need to go to find the missing assignments. If you've never used Zoom using a computer before, this video show you how you can, how. Actually access your student NETC email account. Go uh, watch this video. Basically, we go to office.com. You know, me as instructor, I also go to office.com to access my my emails. So this um, video show you how how you can access your Office 365. Okay, so you can actually have access to your student NETC email. Self service is student self service is basically where all your um, academic information is stored. Um, so this video show you how you can access your student self service, even though the video is geared more towards um, advising, but it also kind of show you how to you, how you can gain access to student self service. You can check your grades, in, you know, for your other classes at the end of semester, you can check your grades using self service. You can actually um, request transcript using self service as well. So a lot of things that student needs is actually stored inside the self-service. Okay, so check out this video. 
so you can have access to your student um, self-service. NetTutor is our online tutoring um, um, platform. Um, NetTutor is, is uh, um, we are using NetTutor for the very first time this semester. So more information will be coming out regarding NetTutor. So when you do come into D2L, later on the semester, you will see more information about Net, uh, how students use NetTutors. So let's go over the syllabus real quick. So on the top of the syllabus, my content information is listed. It also tells you to, you can check my office hour and my phone number in D2L. Our modality is online course. Here is a course des description, what we will be uh, covering this semester. So our entire course, we I divide it into 30 topics, okay? Which actually, which covers all these topics listed here. Okay. All right, I will, I will check everybody's prerequisites. Uh, required materials, you do not need to purchase textbook, but you do need to have a graphing calculator. In these lecture videos, I will show you how to um, use graphing calculator to um, to do some of these statistical problems. Um, what students think about probability and statistics? Okay, uh, what you what you what you, what you have seen so far um, is very very basic. The, our class does dive into a little bit deeper into probability and statistics. So graphing calculator definitely um, is required. So if you don't have one, you can borrow one from from family or friends or you can contact our enrollment center, see if they have graphing calculator you can, you can borrow. But you will notice later on the semester, I will use a lot of graphing calculators, okay? I will show you a lot of steps in the graphing calculators, okay? And to, to, actually, to actually do a lot of computation using that. Uh, here are the course objective and course learning outcomes. So for each topic within a week, okay, what you will do, like I mentioned earlier, is print or copy your lecture handouts, watch lecture video and take notes on those handouts you printed or copied. Complete the homework, complete the discussion if you have discussion that week, and of course, complete the project if you have project during that week. Once you finish taking all the notes, please upload your selected topic notes into the appropriate Dropbox. So remember, the very first week, uh, excuse me, not very first, first week, the topic, topic one, two, three, Okay, I only want you to turn in topic two notes that you took. Not all of them, just topic two. All right, so here are your graded assignments, homework, discussions, note taken, and your two projects are 10% total. Okay, each project is about 5%. And uh, project does have a lot of questions on there. Um, so, the, you know, so just bear with me on the project. Um, it, I know it has a lot of questions on it since only two of them. So projects are not difficult. And I do have videos regarding to how to do those projects. So just bear with me on answering all those questions. All right, a little bit more about the homework. So homework are already will, will be posted in D2L. Questions on the homework are related to the topic written or uh, written on the lecture handouts and discussed in the lecture videos, okay? All your homework is only has one attempt. Once you submit, then, then that's it. And, I, and your homework does count for your weekly attendance. And I do not drop any homework grade. <laughs> All right, topical discussions. Discussions are posted in D2L. And of course, the topic are related to uh, what's on the lecture handouts and what we discuss in the lecture videos, okay? So we you only have one, one attempt on the discussions, okay? And, and it does count for weekly attendance. Um, there are two discussion questions. It's almost like a class project. So it does require everybody um, to submit on time. So, so we can actually use the results of one discussion and then into the next discussion. So, so you will notice that due dates for, for, for those discussion topic, you know, it's not to an, um, the due date and end date is actually right there at by the end of the week. So, as I post more, um, as I post more homework um, assignments in the lecture notes and uh, lecture videos, you're gonna see you have a due date for your homework, for your assignments, and you also have an end date. Okay, end date just allows you to make up the assignment. Okay, three other semester, 
without me having give you special permission, you know. So let's say for for the very for this week, topic one, two, three, you missed topic two homework. Okay. So you can make it up anytime during the semester as long as it's before December 1st. Okay. Even though you, you know, even though it's due on the August 28th, for example. But you got to make sure you make it up this homework assignment by December 1st. So December 1st is last day of the class. So last day of the class, um, the end date is, on, even though the end date is on December 1st, but your your homework, you got to turn in at least one graded assignment per week to be count as present for that week. Okay, so the due dates are here to make sure students understand that the, in the homework are due within that week. But if you but if you do need to make up some assignments, you can, that's not a problem. Okay, but don't power so much homework don't miss so much homework assignments, okay, where you cannot make it up at the end of semester. And your discussion also tell you when is due and when is end, okay? So certain discussion questions, well, the due dates and the end date is gonna be exactly the same because those are the discussion where I, where I need students response for the following discussion. All right, no takings. There are selected topical notes take uh, notes each week for you to take while you're watching lecture videos. You are required to upload the notes into appropriate drop Dropbox in D2L. Please write your name and the date you watch the lecture video in pen on the top right hand corner of every page you are going to upload into Dropbox. So I know that you actually are the one that took the notes. Weekly submission of notes taken will be counted for attendance. All right, there are two projects um, this semester, okay? And of course, the question on the, top, on, on the project are related to uh, the topic we talk about in, in the lecture videos and what's written on the lecture handouts, okay? Each project only have one attempt and you also count for that week, for that particular week's attendance. All right, here's my grading rubric, okay? For the homework projects, here are your standard grading systems, okay? And here are the weekly outlines. So we follow this weekly outlines very closely. What you see here is basically what you will see on, under the course um, table of content in D2L. So we got discussion one, two, three, right? And then discussion four is not gonna be until October 10th, October 16th. Discussion five is the following week, okay? Um, so last project is due on the, um, it's going to be due on the last week, December 1st, and project one is right here, it is due, going to be due between um, October 3rd, and you know, it's going to be due on October 9th, okay, so um, I will, I will definitely make sure I'll post um, videos regarding to the project, what I want you to do as well, okay. So everything is already laid out right here. Um, I just have not upload everything yet. So just stay with, um, just be patient with me. I will upload um, all the course information as we, uh, all the course materials as we go along this semester. Right, attendance policies for no-shows. Okay, so the syllabus homework is very important. So if, we, if you do not complete the syllabus homework during the first week, after the online class begins, you will be marked as a no-show and be dropped on the class. So it's basically like saying you never show up a class. So you're not going to get charged for it. It's basically saying that we will remove your name from the class because you never attended. Now, if you do submit the syllabus homework, then you are bound by the following attendance requirement. The attendance requirement for online class says student must log in and complete a graded activity for each week to be counted as present. Okay, any student who failed to complete a great activity for two weeks or 14 consecutive days will be dropped from the class with a W. And that W actually stand at, will, be, will be noted as excessive absence. All right, we'll talk a little bit about how to withdraw from the course here in a minute. Uh, student with disabilities, if you do have a document disability and require accommodation, please contact the Dean of Student Service he or she will provide guidance regarding to official documentation of dis disabilities and or accommodation of needs, okay? You can read up on the ac academic dishonesty and honesty. For part, the Family Education Rights Privacy Act statement basically saying that your parents 
um, or your guardians um, cannot, you know, cannot simply just ask me about your attendance or your grades, okay? Your academic information is actually protected by the Family Education Rights and Privacy Act. Okay, so before we end this welcome and syllabus video, I, I do want to go over your syllabus homework. Okay, so during the welcome week, make sure you submit the syllabus homework and make sure you finish this first discussion called introduce yourself to the class. All right, so we'll go over this here. I um, just want to make sure um, some of these other buttons on top class list um, attendance is recorded here. Uh, assignments is where all the drop parts are going to be. Discussion, you're going to see all the all the discussion um, topic I have listed. You can actually see them all right now. Okay. On the first day of class, you will see them all. Okay. So the direction is here. The information of the, the information is here, and the direction is also right here. Tell you to click on it, start a new thread. Okay. And you got the post before you can see other people's post. All right. Grades, click on grades um, to actually check your grades, or you can, I think I have something, or you can click on how to, uh, I thought I have one for grades, how to check for your grades, but most of the time, how to check for missing assignments, that probably show you how to, this probably also show you how to check your grades, but basically you click on grades, you're gonna see what's graded, what has not been graded, and your overall average at um, um, three other semesters. You can see your overall average three other semesters, okay? So let's go over this syllabus homework. Okay, I'm very specific here on what, what answer you type in. So please just copy down the answer so you can actually enter them when you start your syllabus homework. Question number one, consider the following questions. You'll be easier to write down the answer before entering inside the box. So some of your homework, some of your homework problems, you know, some of your homework assignments will have this direction in them. So when you see this direction, please just write your answer down before you enter it, okay? Inside the box, it'll be easier. When you see this thing right here, it says use graphical equation to enter answers. That means I want you to use what we so call the graphical equation. So to get to the graphical equation, click on the plus sign, click on equation, and click on graphical equation. As you can see, once a graphical equation pops up, it blocks okay, you, the questions that you, that you need to answer. So question number one has two parts. Number one, number two. Number one says, what is the best phone number to get in contact with you? So we say number one, enter the best phone number I can reach you. This is your phone number. This is your best phone number. Okay. So why would I need this? Um, I so the only way I would need I will ever contact you on your, you know, I will contact you the number you provide me is if you did not submit a greater activity for two weeks straight, then I will actually send you a text for my Google Voice number asking you what's going on, why you have not um, submitted any great ass assignment for two weeks, you know. So that would be the only time I will ever, you know, you know, contact you using your 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 phone number. Okay. So just kind of check up on you, make sure you make sure you are still okay. Make sure you still want to continue this course. And kind of trying to find out why you have not submitted <clears throat> a, a greater homework assignment for two weeks straight. Okay. Because I definitely do not want you to fall behind. Well, when you enter your phone number, click on insert and press enter and go back to graphical equation. The phone number provided in number one, is it a cell, home, or work phone number? Tell me which one is it? So we're gonna say number two, is it a cell, work, or home number? Okay, just let me know, click on insert. Every time you enter something into the box, there is a check and that check mark tells you that the answer is safe. So if you cannot complete the homework in one sitting, okay, don't worry, your answer is safe. You can simply just exit out of it. But once you submit down here, once you submit the homework, then you submit it. 
okay? And that's a done deal. You only get one attempt. So if you're not quite ready to submit the homework yet, just exit out and come back to it. All right, number two, what are the best practice using D2L? Okay, so here are the answer. Please copy this down. This is what you will enter for me. Number one, please use a computer or laptop instead of using a mobile device. Okay, mobile device does not allow you to enter these mathematical symbols using graphical equation. The mobile device screen is real small. You are not even gonna see this plus sign here. Okay, so please, when you do your homework, projects, discussions, please use a computer or laptop instead of a mobile device. Number two, when you do use your computer or laptop, please use Google Chrome. Okay, so let's say you have a Mac computer, please use the use Google Chrome from the Mac. Okay, D2L is most compatible with Google Chrome. Make sure your computer or laptop has Word documents so you can actually pull up your, you can actually open and print your lecture handouts. Okay, so, so if your computer does not have Word document, definitely you can check into that video on office.com, get access to your office.com, your Office 365, so you can actually um, download the Office 365, okay? So every student has three, has three free download for the Office 365, okay? So that means you can, um, that means you can download those, you should be able to download those onto your computer, uh, so you have access to Word document, Excel, you know, and other, and other things. Number four, definitely use graphical equation to enter answers when it's asking you to. If you do not, when it's asking you to use graphical equation to enter answers and you don't use it, then, then I do not count your answer as correct. Okay, I'll count your answer as incorrect automatically. What's the last day of our class? Our last day of class is December 1st, 2022. Can you email your instructor using a personal email? The answer is no. You cannot email me using your personal email because a lot of times your personal email does not even come into my come into my inbox. Okay. So please use your student NATC email to email me. Okay. So make sure if you cannot, if you don't know how to access your email, please check out this office.com video under the course information. All right, how does student go about withdrawing a class? So if something happens where you need to withdraw from the class, okay, how you go about withdrawing from the class, number one, contact the enrollment center at this number. You can contact the student service with the same number. You just ask the operator to, to, to uh, redirect you to the student service. You can contact the instructor using student NTC email. D2L instant message, or you can actually text to my Google Voice number saying that Mr. Chan, something happened, I need to withdraw from the class. And I can actually help you uh, with the withdrawing process. All right, question number six. What are the four types of graded activity in this class? We have homework, discussion, note-taking, and project, two of them. All right. Our last assignment, what is the last graded assignment that need to be completed for this class? Project number two is the last assignment. All right, question number eight. Any student who failed to complete a graded activity for how many consecutive days will be dropped from the class? 14 cons consecutive days. All right, question number nine, I will show you how to enter some of these math mathematical symbols. Okay, these are the common mathematical symbol you will enter. So let me show you how to do that. So uh, number one, so I'm gonna click on the plus sign to go to graphical equation, equation, graphical equation. I'm gonna slide over. Okay, so number one, enter a fraction. Do not use slash for fraction. Use fraction bar for fractions. 16, okay. Click down here, 52. All right, the cursor is in the denominator. So if you can click right next to the fraction or press the right arrow key on the keyboard, then it automatically puts you right there, comma, space, four over 52 times three over 51. So that's two fraction bars. 
followed by a multiplication in the middle. Question bar, oops, sorry. You know what, I'm gonna go ahead and type it in four over 52. So I'm just using my keyboard times, my other fraction bar, three over 51. Okay, so once I type in number one, press insert. Do not type in all four, answer, four lines of answer here because once you click on insert, you're not gonna see anything here. Okay, so one line, one graphical equation. Press enter, let's do number two. All right, repeat the multiplication and exponent. All right, number two, seven times seven times seven. So I'm using my keyboard, seven times seven times seven, comma, space, seven to the third power. So seven and the exponent is right here to the third power. All right, that's it. Number three, go back to graphical equation. Number three, all right, union sign, intersection sign, X bar, this is called sigma, mu, and alpha. This, so the last three is Greek letters. So, so if you look up here, we're well, under the first tab. Union sign is under the first tab, all right, comma, space, intersection, comma, space, X bar, okay? So for X bar, you go all the way here to this tab. All right, and this right here has a little bar above the box. And inside the box, you're typing an X. That's how you're typing X bar, comma, space. Sigma is a Greek letter. So we go to this tab for Sigma, comma, space. Mu is a Greek letter. That's an epsilon. This is mu, comma, and alpha. Alpha is this one. It's a Greek letter. So we use this tab, insert. All right, enter. All right, go back to graphical equation. All right, so number four, the first three called white hat, H-A-T, hat. Y hat, P hat, Q hat. So with the hat, we go back to the same place where the X bar is. Okay, here's a hat. Y hat, comma, P hat. All right. So see right here, my cursor is actually right, it's inside that box. I press a Click it out. Comma. All right. Z sub, the next call Z sub 0 0.001 divided by two. All right. So that's subscript, basically saying subscript. So I go back to the very first tab, tapping Z, subscript and fraction bar. And because this is 0 0.01 divided by two, 0 0.01 divided by two, I cut. All right, so my cursor in denominator, if I press the right arrow key, per cursor is beside the fraction, subscript. So one more, all the way to the right, comma. And then square root is under the first tab. Also square root, fraction bar, for my 168 over 991, insert, okay. So that's basically how you actually enter um, mathematical symbols, okay, using graphical equation. Okay, so if you have questions about this class, please don't hesitate to contact me. Um, if you have any questions about what I go over in this, um, for, the, for this syllabus uh, um, videos, welcome syllabus videos, please let me know, okay. So good luck this semester, we will be in touch every week. And um, if you, again, if you have questions about what you're learning, what's on the lecture video or how to do the homework, please don't hesitate to contact me. All right, thank you so much. We'll keep in touch.